Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today's episode is brought to you by Women's Rights News on Facebook and Instagram. Here is the Feisty News for Women. Hawaiian Governor David Ige signed a new bill into law making period products free at Hawaii public schools. Senate Bill 2821 appropriates nearly $1 million to the State Department of Education to provide menstrual pads and tampons to students who can't afford them. Thank you, Hawaii. In other news, the fate of the progress of humanity and women's rights is on hold once again as the Supreme Court has stalled its decision on abortion access which was set to be announced today. Because of the leaked Supreme Court opinion that claimed to overturn Roe versus Wade, every woman and man with any bit of sense who believes in the progress of our society is hurting right now. A new study from California has found that more than a quarter of abortion clinics in the U.S. would shut down if the Supreme Court overturns the landmark ruling. Denying federal protection to access to abortion is a direct attack on the progress of women. Denying us autonomy over our bodies indicates that we are not respected or valued as humans. We are not slaves. We are not incompetent. Denying us the right to make choices for our bodies is a reflection of the toxic idea of leadership that has driven our society to its present state of discord. Every single person is suffering mentally. What would our society be like without the woman's right to access abortion? Heather Bellicosa, the author of The Punishings, which depicts a world without abortion rights, has the answer. Welcome to the feisty, Heather. Tell us about your book and why it's relatable to today's society. Hi, my name is Heather and I predicted the future. I wrote this book called The Punishings. It's about a woman in the Louisiana Bayou in the near future, and she lives in a world without abortion rights. So she lives in, uh, she works in an overcrowded orphanage. She helps desperate women with their unwanted pregnancies that are like using herbal remedies passed down from her grandmother. And she finds herself in an impossible decision, which puts her in more danger than those she's trying to save. So I wrote the book when it was purely fiction in 2019. I could start to see the whisperings of what was to come, like Mike Pence attending a March for Life rally and Trump giving a lot of winks and nods to the movement and a bend to the conservative right. I could see things like we were disdaining intellectualism and we were kind of obsessing about crime and punishment. Um, We were disdaining women. And all of these leanings were towards fascism and I felt like our country was heading in that direction. I really wanted to do something about it. So I took a book where all of those things happened and the fascists won. And so in this world, women no longer have rights over their own bodies. And since I wrote it, I've watched that it's actually coming true. So fiction is turning into fact, because in my book, I wrote about women being jailed for having an abortion and that's actually happening now. Um, I wrote about them resorting to herbal remedies and that's actually happening. I wanted it to be a warning of events that would happen if we let ourselves go down this path. And now it's really gone to fact. And so it's horrifying me, but I wanted to do something about it. So aside from um, just getting the story out there, it's inspired me a lot to attend rallies and to give a lot of support to different organizations. And I'm really hopeful for the future because I feel like I'm seeing a lot of women come out fighting. They're arguing, they're not backing down. They are coming out in droves. I think it's going to continue. I think that they haven't seen anything from us yet. So I think that what this has showed me more than anything is that women are not going down without a fight. And I think that we are going to win. I just want to thank you for having me on, Tierica. Thank you. Glad to have you, Heather. I'm nervous, but like you, I believe women will be able to handle this. It's our time for our leadership to shine. In other news, As the child tax credit ended in December and inflation increases, U.S. Senator Mitt Romney introduced an updated version of the child tax credit plan introduced by President Biden. In Romney's Family Security Act 2.0 plan, 
families would receive up to $350 per month for children up to age five and $250 for children age six to 17. Families with multiple kids would get their benefits capped at $1,250 per month or $15,000 per year, according to a report by fatherly.com. While on the surface, Romney's plan seems generous, yet within the details hides the fact that the additional income would not be given to the poorest American families. While bragging that the plan will not increase the country's deficit, the plan will get rid of existing tax breaks and social spending programs like the Earned Income Tax Credit, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, Head of Household Tax Filing Status, the Child and Dependent Care Tax Credit, and the State and Local Tax Deduction, which is known as SALT. The Family Security Act 2.0 also has a work requirement, and each family must earn at least $10,000 to receive the credit. $10,000 may be easy to earn for families with two parents. However, if a family has only one parent, the single parent is still responsible for earning the full $10,000. While Romney describes the updated tax credit plan as one of the most important efforts to support the family in nearly 30 years, this plan potentially disregards those families who need it most while leaving them without the standard financial support system that they are used to, leaving them ultimately in a worse situation than before. Well, it's time for a break. Two black women were attacked by Trump supporters. You wanna know why? Well, and she's been in love for 12 years. Can you guess where she found her good man? More on these interesting stories after the break. Don't miss it. As a black millennial, I remember when we used to wear the Malcolm X t-shirt and have the black encyclopedias in our home, the Klein and our identity and our pride, and that really bothers me. Yeah, that bothers me too. And I know there's something we can do to make a difference to extend beyond our households. We started a podcast. Podcast is to empower, educate, and edify black excellence using seven principles of Kwanzaa. And we're more than just a podcast. We're also difference makers and thought provokers. Here's some of our clips. Let's say I'll keep on until we do get it a national holiday slice it you're going to need the per like, you're going to need someone visit our website at livingtheprinciples365.com to get your principles and action poster and to listen to our podcast by getting the poster you will become part of our e-tribe and we will send you periodic educational enlightening and entertaining information about the black diaspora Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? Did you hear about the two black women who were attacked by Trump supporters? Girl, yes. During Tuesday's January 6th committee hearing focused on uncovering Trump's aggressive efforts to stop Joe Biden's presidential victory certification, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, a mother and daughter living in Georgia, described how a mob of Donald Trump supporters came after them online and in person. Moss and her mother were targeted and harassed relentlessly after Rudy Giuliani, who was advising Trump on how to overturn the results of the 2020 election, used video footage of the pair working during the election count to demonstrate his stance that Georgia's election results were rigged. According to Adam Elderman on NBCNews.com, users on websites like 4chan and Twitter zoomed in on CCTV footage falsely claiming Freeman and Moss were moving a suitcase of illegal ballots. In reality, the suitcase was a regular box of ballots. Freeman and Moss were identified by conspiracy theorists and far right influencers who falsely claimed the video served as evidence of a rigged election, and Ruby and Shay were threatened, insulted, harassed, and attacked on social media. I'm so sorry this happened to you, Shay and Ruby. The Trump supporters who believe those lies and attacked you two innocent women should be ashamed of themselves. Yet, this isn't the first social media attack, and it won't be the last. In a society that requires most people to create a fake mask to wear every day in order to fit in and prosper, social media has given our society a safe outlet 
to express our inner rage without restriction. Every person behind those online attacks would never say any of those things in person to anyone, yet they lash out like demons behind the computer screen under fake names. Why is everybody so mad? Our society makes us mad because we can't be who we really are. We feel trapped by social rules and expectations, comparing ourselves to others, so we lash out inwardly. And then, when we have the chance, we get these social media attacks. It could be any one of us angrily spewing the hatred we feel for ourselves onto any target. The true nature of people isn't seen in moments of celebration. No, you can see the true nature of people by what they think and do when they believe no one will ever find out. Accepting the truth that hurt people hurt people. As a society, we are hurting and it shows. In other news, we live in the feisty life, and sometimes it means allowing the good to come into our lives and accepting it. In a world where the image of a man comes with a danger sign, sometimes there is no danger and we can relax and be loved. In today's edition of He is a Good Man, where we try to find good man in our society, Amber describes what it's like to be loved by one. Amber, where'd you find your good man? I, I found my good man, my husband, Mike Lee, in the grocery store. We met in the produce aisle. Um, I saw him, this tall, handsome man, didn't have a wedding ring on, and so I approached him. I, I went up to him and said, hey, I know this sounds really weird, but I'm a matchmaker. Are you single? Um, and the rest is history. And so um, I, Mike and I have been together for almost 12 years now, so we've been through a whole lot of crap together, and it's not easy. but. I know he's a good man because he supports me no matter what. I have all these crazy wild ideas. He certainly gives me pushback and challenges me, but at the end of the day, like he totally supports me 100%. Um, and in the good times and the bad times. So a couple of years ago, in fact, in 2020, um, I suffered a sudden cardiac arrest. I was just turned 40 years old. I'm driving, Mike's in the car with his mom and our daughter. My heart just stopped. I literally like died behind the wheel drove head on into a brick home. And Mike was the one that pulled me out of the smoking vehicle. Uh, somebody performed CPR on me until they arrived with a defibrillator. I don't remember any of this. All I know is that I woke up in the hospital three days later and my man was by my side. He was the one that helped me take my first step steps. He washed my hair for a week um, and helped me through my recovery, never wavered in his commitment to me. And I think that's definitely the sign of a good man and a good partner in life. Um, and after that, oh my gosh, like after going through something like that, we had been dating 11 years and I'm like, I better marry this man. Um, so we went ahead and got married. Um, we got a place in Puerto Rico. We're moving to the island. We're going to slow down and enjoy island time and enjoy life together. Um, and I would say besides being supportive, Mike is a really good man because he truly is my best friend and he makes me laugh like nobody's business. If you find a man who has a great sense of humor and can make you laugh even during those difficult times, you need to hang on to him because that's a good man. Um, and Mike gives back. He gives back to the community. He mentors young boys. He's a great father, a great husband. Like, trust me, there are good men out there. Mike Lee, thank you so much for loving Amber and for being her best friend. Thank you for proving so many people wrong and being an example of what could be for women who need to be loved. I salute you, Mike Lee, for being a good man. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the Feisty. Welcome to the Feisty.